This is not gonna be another one of those Dota 2 videos where I'll tell you the top 5 crazy builds or the top 5 this or the top 5 that. Like those things don't matter at all. Instead, I'll give you the best real advice on how to improve on certain concepts of the lane as a position 5 to enable you to master the four most important aspects of the lane. So, what are these four things? Number one, how to balance the lane and why is it important to balance the lane? Number two, how to get the kills, farm and experience in the lane. Number three, how not to die on the lane. Number four, understanding when you have to leave the lane. These are the four things you need to look at if you want to get the most out of your laning phase. So how can you fix these four things? Let's talk about the first one. So balancing the lane includes three things. The first one is to know when to pull the lane and when is it important to pull the lane. In this example, you can make a good guess by looking at the creeps that they're about to double. Now is the best time to go for a pull, but what kind of pull will help the lane and not grief it? Here is an example of how a pull is bad for your lane and how a pull is good for your lane. Here, this player has pulled four creeps into a single small cap which means that the small cap will die and the creeps will add up to the lane, thus pushing it. So it didn't fulfill the purpose of pulling, which is to balance the lane. Thus it ended up being bad. Here this player has pulled three creeps into the small cap, which ends up killing the three creeps. Thus it reduces the total number of creeps on the lane, making it balanced, thus fulfilling the purpose. So remember, there are four types of pulls on the lane and you need to think about them whenever the lane starts to push. So the first one is going to be the single camp pull. You can pull the creeps into this into the small camp, but remember to just pull two to three creeps and to do that you need to pull it in a direction where you will end up dragging only two to three creeps. I know there's people who tell you like a specific time for when to pull the camp but I think if you go it, go about it with your own feel you can end up making pulls happen that normally would not actually happen. So the next type of pull is gonna be stack pulling. You should stack the small camp if you feel you are not being contested or the enemy off laner is alone on the lane and is posing no threat to your carry. In this way you can deny all four creeps on your lane with a single pull but remember to clear the small camp yourself if you are able to pull it another time because the enemy offlaner will end up taking your stack so you can get some gold and XP from clearing your own stack. The third type of pull is going to be chain pulling. This can be done if you mistakenly pull the small camp and now you feel that the lane is going to push again because all the creeps all the creeps on the small camp are gonna die. So you have to chain the hard camp with your small camp in order to get the chain pulled on. This will help you clear all the creeps but I wouldn't recommend this because it isn't that easy considering the enemy position 4 is always trying to stop your pull. The number 4th type of pulling is gonna be side pulling. If you miss the timing to pull the creeps from your small camp because your carry might be in a rough position so you can use the hard camp on your lane to actually side pull the creeps into your creep wave to try and maintain some sort of equilibrium. So. The next point is to balance the lane by not aggroing it. Usually what happens is when we try to harass the enemy, we ruin the balance of the lane because we are constantly taking aggro from the creeps when we are trying to harass the enemy. So how do we stop this? Here's a trick to harass the enemy by not aggroing the creeps. All you have to do is just stand right outside the aggro range, which is around here and attack click the enemy. This will draw aggro to the creeps. Because aggro is universal, the aggro will go on cooldown and you will be able to get two hits off on the enemy before the cooldown comes on again. So this is really helpful for ranged heroes and really good for like high ranged support heroes that are able to harass a lot. So you should definitely use this trick as much as you can on the lane to get the most out of your uh, out, out of your autos another example of how aggro is beneficial in keeping the lane 
balanced is if your creeps if your creeps are on your tower just make sure you use aggro to pull them out you can aggro from any hero on the map so just use your aggro and pull the creeps back out of your tower so that the lane doesn't push again so now you have the basic understanding of how to pull and how to aggro and when do you have to do it so now we move on to the next point which is how to get kills farm and experience in the lane to get kills and farm and experience you need to remember these things the first and most important thing on the laning phase is itemization itemization is the first step on the lane you need to think of and most of us don't give much thought to our starting items we just buy whatever feels good you might have noticed many players buy a lot of iron branches and if you haven't then use yourself buy some branches or tangles without much thought to how much it actually impacts your lane well the reason why people buy up to even four branches is that they want to make the most out of their tangles and to get the most stats they convert these branches into a magic wand and uh, this magic wand is really helpful on the lane because there's a lot of spells that are gonna be used so you get uh, magic wand charges and uh, with higher stats from the ironwood branches you'll have higher damage higher hp higher armor and even more mana so basically the higher the strength you have you have more hp higher agility means you have more armor and higher intelligence means more mana so you get each of one of these stats from these iron branches so it's a good idea to have up to three or four branches so now we have like two to three slots left what should we buy next in this patch a new item was released called blood grenade with this item you get hp and you can throw nades when enemies are out of position to slow them and go on them with your carry so buying one or two grenades is a great idea going into the lane to decide how many tangles you want to bring on the lane you have to look at two things these two things are gonna be how many tangles is your carry bringing to the lane and do you think your hero has a way to trade better with the enemy hero? If not, then you probably need more region on the lane. So lastly, you have one more slot remaining. If you are playing a hero that is a combo hero, you will need mangoes. As heroes like Crystal Maiden, Lich and Grim. These heroes, I call them combo heroes because they synergize really well with carries like Juggernaut, Monkey King, Ursa. These heroes provide the slows and enable the carries to get kills on the lane. So if you're playing a hero like this, you will be able to get mana from mangoes and mangoes will help you spam your spells. So buying more than two to three mangoes is a must on these heroes to be able to use your spells to the best of your abilities. To understand if you can trade with enemies or not, you need to see if they have higher attack damage higher attack range, higher armor, or stronger spells. I'll explain it further. So the next thing is trading. How to trade? The way to trade with the enemy on the lane is to use the aggro trick that I mentioned earlier to stand just outside the range of the aggro and then hit twice and come back. This way you will do a lot of damage without ruining the balance of the lane. Other times it's good to trade is if you have higher creeps and the enemy is in a bad position. Mostly the enemy offlaner will be in a bad position when he is going for the range creep. And the range creep is really important so this will be an opportunity for you to get your spells off. So try to make him as low as possible whenever he's going for some creep that is really important on the lane like the range creep. So some heroes on position 5 uh, like Enchantress, Undying, Rubik, Mirana and Veno are great at trading due to their high stats, strong spells like Decay for Undying, Gale for Veno, Starstorm for Mirana, Rubik's Fade Bolt, and Impetus for Ench. So it's much easier to trade with these heroes. Ench also has uh, spirits, so nature's attendance, so she can heal herself and she wins most trades only because she has higher regen. Some heroes are really bad on position 5, which might include Nyx, Tiny, Winter Wyvern. Winter Wyvern still works out because the hero has a slow and the hero has another nuke, but it's still not as great. 
So basically you don't want to play a hero which doesn't actually help your ally carry hero to win the lane and is kind of like XP dependent and doesn't really do much doesn't really harass harass the enemy in a way that you can farm on the carry position so i wouldn't recommend these heroes however these heroes can still work out depending on your position one for example your position one is playing ck so now ck can kind of work with nyx because they both have a way to combo together but if you're playing nyx assassin with an anti-mage now the anti-mage doesn't really benefit too much from your hero because there's no synergy among both of these heroes. Anti-Mage doesn't have a stun. He doesn't have any way to fight that well early on. Did as well before he gets his ring or whatever, like Cornucopia or something. So it's not that good with Anti-Mage. And heroes, like uh, other heroes like Anti-Mage, you can say that there's Lark, there's Void. These heroes don't really have the tools to fight early on without the help of their position 5. So having a good position 5, like a Grim, a CM, a Lich, maybe undying like these heroes they really help out a lot on the lane so now the next thing i'm gonna focus on is gonna be the lane objectives like what are your basic objectives on the lane that you need to look at to actually win the lane so the number one and the most important thing is to secure the range creep and to deny the range creep this creep is the most important creep in the lane it gives the most experience and your first two to three waves are very important if you get the range creeps of these waves, you will get level 2 before the enemy does. It means that now, since you're level 2, you're gonna have 4 spells compared to their 2 spells. So this is the best time to go on the enemy and try to kill them before they get level 2. This is a very important thing to do on the lane and this is something that every team or every good player wants to do before they as soon as they start the laning phase so you need to try and deny the range creep with your carry together and uh, if you even want to deny like creeps any creep you can just ping the creep and hit it when it's in deny range and the hp of the creep is worth like as much as two shots from like one shot each from both of your heroes so that's a really good way to deny creeps and the enemy can't really contest the creep anymore if you use this trick a lot so the next thing is blocking the enemy hard camp with the sentry war equilibrium is everything and without the equilibrium lanes get really hard so i would recommend to always block the hard camp but if you want to learn and you want to understand when it's good for you to have the hard camp i would really recommend you to not block it because you'll have a really good way to learn as to which lanes are like really hard to win if you don't block the hard camp and which lanes get really easy after you block the hard camp i'll give you an example of when it is a good idea to not block the hard camp usually like people will just say block the hard camp it's look really good but imagine you're playing undying and pl or undying plus some hero and now undying is a hero that is really strong on the lane because you can actually zone out the enemies solo with your decay it's one of the strongest heroes so if you have a like really strong hero or a really strong lane it wouldn't make much sense to block the hard camp because every time the enemy is gonna pull the camp you will always be able to either stop it or you'll able to farm it as well so in some situations i'd suggest you not to block the hard camp or sometimes like if you're playing chen or if you're if you're, if you're playing enchantress or you have uh, mirana position 5 then you don't need to block it because you use the hard camp just as much as the enemy does and it's better for you to use the hard camp instead of blocking so the next thing that i'm gonna talk about is the gate watcher and the lotus take the watcher near your safe lane gates before the laning phase starts it will help you see heroes that travel from the gate and try to interrupt your laning phase this is the only path they can take to come to your lane, so remember to always take it. And every 3 minutes, try to be in a position where you can snatch the lotus. Every bit of regen will help you trade better, use more spells, and give you a higher chance of winning the lane. So you should always try to take the lotus only if you have higher HP and at 
are not at a risk of dying because otherwise you might end up feeding. The next thing is how not to die on the lane. To understand how to not die on the lane, you need to understand the nature of heroes. Every hero has a unique role in the game and every hero has a unique role in the laning phase. And with each hero, you have to position yourself differently depending on your strengths. I'll categorize these heroes to make it simple for you. I've mentioned these types of supports before. It's the combo supports, the combo nuke supports. Heroes like Disruptor, Lich, Grimstroke, Crystal Maiden, Ancient Apparition. These heroes generally need to stand behind the carry and use their spells in combinations with the spells of their carry. They are usually picked with carries that provide a lot of kill potential on the lane like Juggernaut, Monkey King or heroes like Wind Ranger or Magnus that are popular right now on the carry position because they're able to do a lot of damage if they get some sort of control. But these heroes on their own, if they try to fight against the enemy position four or the offlane, might just end up feeding because they don't really do as much damage to harass both the heroes at once. And they are generally really squishy, so they just die if they are trading with two heroes. And the next type of supports that I'm gonna talk about are the lane dominating supports. Heroes like Enchantress, Undying, Chen, Pain, Rubik, Mirana, and Veno. These heroes trade really well with the matchup that they are presented against. These heroes can position away from the carry and fight the position four on their own, or even the position three, depending on how weak they are. For example, if you are playing and dying versus a Beastmaster and an Earth Spirit, the total damage that they do won't be enough to zone you out. You can zone both of these heroes out together, and similarly, Veno is great at fighting heroes one on one. It can also combine with the carry to get kills. Rubik, another example, as he has Fade Bolt. The enemies cannot trade back as Fade Bolt reduces their attack damage. And next, we have the sustain supports heroes like Warlock, Abaddon, Io, Oracle, Dazzle. These heroes need to stand behind the carry and continuously heal them. They are okay with trading, but their ultimate strength lies in giving their carry a lot of heals. So they can stand on the lane on their own. So to position with each of these heroes on the lane, you really need to understand if your hero is a combo support, most of the time you want to stand behind your carry and not in a position on the lane where you're exposed to both the position four and the offlaner. If you're playing a hero like Undying, you can stand further away from your carry in a position where normally you might be in danger because these heroes don't care they can trade 1v2 so remember the positioning of your hero will depend upon whether you can trade with the enemies or not if you can trade with the position 4 you can stand on the left side of the safe lane in radiant or the right side of the safe lane in dire but if you can't trade then you need to stand away from your away from your carry like on the opposite side so you can hit the enemy offlaner and bait the enemy position four to actually run through the creep wave to try and deal with you so remember positioning matters a lot on the laning phase and through good positioning you'll be able to get a lot more uh, damage on the laning phase and you can not actually die if you play in a really good spot on the lane all the time so the next concept that I'm gonna, the final concept that we're gonna talk about is understanding when you have to leave the lane or when you have to stay on the lane and like your enemy, like your carry is gonna go to the jungle. So to leave the lane, you have to see the hero of the enemy offlaner and their items. If the enemy offlaner has a vanguard or is level six, these are the times that you might want to think about starting to rotate away from the lane and try to put your hero to use elsewhere because when the enemy hero gets a vanguard or the enemy hero gets six now imagine you're playing against a beastmaster now if beastmaster gets his helm or he gets his vanguard and he has roar so now he has a kill threat to your carry and you as a position five can't really change that Unless you're stomping the lane and you're like level seven or eight and the guy is just six, then like it's a different story. But 
most of the time the thing is that the enemy is gonna get six heroes like doom enigma beastmaster timber saw all of these heroes they get really strong at six brewmaster for example like when he gets six he has primal split so at these points on the lane your carry doesn't want to stay on the lane anymore because he's just gonna die and if he does then like he's gonna die and the enemy offlaner is gonna take your tower and things are gonna start looking really bad so in these situations the best move that you can make when the enemy gets a vanguard or he gets a level six that you need to decide if your hero is better off at rotating somewhere else if you feel that your hero can rotate and usually the point when the enemies are gonna get level six or vanguard is gonna be around the six minutes so the best decision at that time is to wait for the power rune at minute six on the river and then eventually go to the seven minute xp runes uh, on the uh, seven minute mark and try to snatch the experience from the enemy and the other good move that you can make is to rotate to the enemy safe lane and try to pressure the tower to try to open up the map for your team and the last thing that you can do is to stay on the lane try to soak xp try to push out the lane with your nukes like rubik is really good at pushing out lanes so you can probably hide in the trees and just use your fade bolt whenever the creeps get close without exposing your hero just so you can get your level six faster so in all of these things you need to experiment there's no actual rule or no actual decision that you can take which might be bad or might be good every single decision that you make in the game is a good decision if it's an active thing that you've thought about doing in the game most reactive decisions are bad so try to think of moves that you can make on your own like going for the six minute rune going for the seven minute rune these are active moves that you're thinking about as a support and if you're just thinking about moves like oh shit like my carry is dying i have to go here i have to save this guy or oh shit someone's dying on mid i'm gonna tp mid these are all reactive moves try to play more actively and try to make your moves more impactful by just being more active I will show you a small laning phase uh, clip of uh, Shopify Rebellion's position 5 player fly like in one of his pubs and to help summarize all of the concepts that I've talked about throughout this video. So this is Shopify Rebellion's position 5 player. The first thing that he did was to move out the courier to the outside of his shop. You get like you get items faster if you move your courier here usually it's here it's gonna take you longer to get your items so the first thing that we want to see is why he went here from uh like he could have gone here right but he went here the reason is that they want to set up some kill he placed a ward here which will help them see if any hero is gonna run up these stairs they can freeze the hero they can use grenade and they can kill the hero they also have veno a great hero at level one so if they don't get the kill they will get the two bounties at least so now before the laning phase starts i want to see his items his item choice is really good uh one more thing whenever you're playing position five and you go for the reels like this it's better to just TP on the lane because if this guy walks all the way from here to here, the first wave that this guy has to play on Bloodseeker is going to be really hard because he's going to be solo and he might lose a lot of HP and uh, it's not worth it. So you just have to TP on the lane and you have to be here before the first waves meet. So now we are going to talk about the items. So his item choices are really good. His hero is a combo hero, so he bought three mangoes. He has a clarity as well, and he has two sentry wars. He has two sentry wars because there's a bounty hunter on the lane, and he also needs to maybe unblock this small camp or to block this hard camp. So these two sentries are really good uh, against the invis heroes and also to block this hard camp or to open this small camp and of course the branches the mangoes and he only has one set of tangos 
So why does he bring only one set? It's because Bloodseeker has Thirst. He will keep on healing with Bloodseeker and uh, he doesn't really care too much about regen. He also has a set himself, so they don't need too many tangos on this lane. So he TP's bottom. And now the first thing that he's doing is taking this Watcher, which I mentioned earlier. Like this Watcher is really important. Now, if any hero is gonna TP through these gates, like this Bane is gonna TP, then they will see this guy run from here. And there's no other actual angle that he can actually disturb the lane from. So this is a good thing to do. So CM kind of steps forward too much and takes a lot of damage. But like this is a mistake here. CM just needs to chill and stay behind the Bloodseeker like I mentioned earlier. The problem with doing this is that she's gonna be at a risk of dying or lose a lot of HP. This range creep can be secured by just this guy's blood right. So he, instead of being here, should, should have been on the left side of the lane. So it was kind of risky, but he's fine because they don't have enough damage. If it was some other hero, maybe he would have been in a lot more trouble, but it worked out. So you have to notice when you watch these replays, if you want to learn on your own, is how like the position five is using his spells. So you see that he has three mangoes, he has a sentry, uh, he has a clarity. So he's trying to use his spells whenever he has the mana for it. Like he's literally zero mana after like one minute. And you see how he used the frostbite here. If he didn't use the frostbite in this situation, the Magnus would have just denied the creep. So he just uses frostbite to make sure that they get the range creep. So you notice that how they're always trying to get the range creeps. If you look at the experience right now, there is a difference already. This CM is slightly above this Magnus and this is what you have to do. Now imagine if these guys get level two before the Magnus and Magnus doesn't have skewer, then Magnus is gonna die because he has no real escape. So this is what they're trying to achieve so far on the lane. Now, CM's positioning has improved a lot. Like, she is away from the Bounty Hunter, right behind her uh, Bloodseeker. And as soon as Bounty ran up to get the range creep, she already is there to press freeze and to do as much damage as she can onto the Bounty Hunter. So now, lane is kind of pushing, but they don't really care because they want to fight on the lane. So they keep on staying together. They know that they're stronger than Magnus and Bounty. Magnus Bounty really weak lane against their lane. So you might have noticed that the guy also didn't really block the hard camp. CM can actually use the hard camp. She can use Frostbite on the big creep and farm it. And they, since they're a stronger lane, they can actually use the hard camp. So they don't necessarily want to block it. You see, like she's gonna try to pull this. So remember when you're like stronger, when you have a stronger lane, like these guys have a stronger lane. So she didn't really go for the hard camp block. So now again, CM is trying only to get the range creep. She's doing her job so far. Every single spell that he's used on the lane has had a purpose. And this is what you have to do in your game. In every game, there must be a purpose of that your hero is fulfilling. So they're continuously using spells they're continuously harassing and one thing here sometimes you have to do this as a support like when there's some creep on the lane like this creep they couldn't really reach it so cm actually took the last hit so remember if there's some creep that your carry can't actually see us you should always go for the last hit on the creep so far laning phase very good like let's see the last hits bloodseeker is 19 cs compared to magnus is 13 now 21 so everything going their way, CM checks for a ward. Usually this spot, just remember in your games, this spot is usually warded. This ward is pretty important to check because it gives you vision of all three of these camps. It's like the most, it's the strongest ward in the game. So always try to check this cliff. It's pretty important. So again, CM using the side pull that we talked about earlier. She's using the side pull to try and get the creeps in order. All right, so she got a really good pull off. Now this is gonna stabilize the lane again. You see the lane here, Bloodseeker, 
wants to fight so he drags the creep into the hard camp so everything going according to plan everything going great but soon this guy has gonna get vanguard so let's see what cm decides to do when the vanguard is up so let's go back here cm has used all of her resources here uh, she has used all of her mangoes all of her clarities and now he realizes that the blood seeker is kind of happy solo like he doesn't really he can't really die to the magnus and magnus isn't really gonna do much bounty is also not really showing on the map so maybe cm wants to remove top like this lane lc and venom if they have a plus one here they can get kills so maybe he wants to rotate here let's see so he's gonna use the gates so remember as a position five you don't really have to stay on the lane all the time the only time that this guy goes stop is when the lane is like here the, this lane is stabilized and they don't really think that the blood seeker can die so she moves stop and now as soon as she goes stop there they suddenly have a big kill threat on this pl and cm shows up here she gets one kill on the enemy carry and now she takes the watcher the gate watcher she's being super annoying this is what your job is as a support just remember as a position five your job is to win the first 15 minutes or the 10 minutes first 10 minutes 15 minutes like this is your time to shine as a position five so even though he dies it's completely fine he gets a kill on the enemy pl she gets her LC2 kills. LC is certainly top net worth in the game. PL is really behind the LC. So now he TPs mid. There's a purpose for everything that the guy is doing. She realizes that if she goes bottom, here Magnus, like nobody cares about this Magnus anymore because this Bloodseeker is free farming. No matter what she does bottom, isn't as worthwhile as actually going mid. And why is it important to TP mid right now? Because the 6 minute power runes are spawning. The 6 minute power runes are really important. And uh, they help you. They help your mid laner in most games. Like this game. The power runes. Nobody really cares. Because both of these heroes don't have a bottle. But the power runes are really helpful in winning some part of the early game. Because imagine you have an ember or a void spirit or a strong spirit who gets like a DD, arcane rune or something, a haste rune. That then the hero can actually rotate and get kills on the side lanes. So remember the power runes are really important. You should try to move for these runes if your lane is stable. Like this lane is stable so she can make moves around the map. But if your lane is not stable and this guy is actually struggling then you can't really move out to your lane. So CM TP's mid for the runes. He checks the top rune and now she sees the top lane is the aggressive lane. She can be here, she can use her spells, she can be aggressive. So she moves top. So that is all. I can go on and on about this game but the focus that I wanted to make from this video was just the laning phase and like a little bit of rotations after the laning phase so you just have to understand that this was a point in the lane that she thought that she did her job which she did and then it was the best decision to use these gates and go top so guys this is gonna be it for this video if you want to reach out to me for coaching or anything i'll post my discord uh, server below in the description and if you want to see more content like this do let me know and if there's any feedback that you give i'll be really happy so thanks again and see you guys bye bye